Hi, my name is Ed Spencer. I'm the UK Exhibitions Manager for Sigma Imaging in the UK. So there's a very exciting new alliance that was announced. And uh, uh, yeah. Sigma is right there in the middle. Absolutely, it's, uh, it is very exciting. So we are, we are one of the members of the L Mount Alliance, which as I'm sure you're aware by now, is ourselves, Leica and Panasonic. Uh, and it's going to give us a great opportunity to make some innovative products for the consumer going forward in the future. So uh, right here, you, you, now you, you're very good friends with Panasonic and Leica. You're going to do a full frame system, provide lenses, but also camera. Yep, so the roadmap at the moment is to launch a full frame mirrorless camera using the Foveon chip next year and a range of uh, prime lenses from the 14mm 1.8 through to the 135mm 1.8 uh, and obviously all the 1.4 art series lenses all in L mount. They will also be available for the mount conversion service. So um, uh, here it says about Sigma cameras and there's a, a, a Fulvion mentioned right here. What is a Fulvion? This is one of the great things about the L Mount Alliance. It gives the consumer the opportunity of having cameras from different manufacturers that maybe have uh, different strengths. Uh, our cameras have always used, or our digital cameras have always used the Foveon technology, which is uh, originally a Californian company. And it's uh, a little bit unusual in that we have a completely different way of capturing information compared to a traditional filter chip. So what happens on a conventional chip is you capture the blue, the green, and the red next to each other. So you might have a, a blue pixel here, and next to it might be a green pixel, and next to that might be a red pixel. The Foveon sensor uses a three-layer system. So we capture all of the color information for blue at every pixel location, and then we can capture the same for the green and the red, and it's stacked one on top of the other. So from a, a let's say, 29 million pixel image, will actually display 20 million pixels on your computer screen. So we're taking more information and compressing it into a much higher uh, detailed image. So the other ones do through color filtering kind of stuff? That's right. So uh, on a conventional chip, it's essentially a monochrome chip. And there's a, a very strongly colored filter put in front of each pixel. So the pixel will either see red, or it'll see blue, or it'll see green. But you don't get all the colors at each location. Is it kind of like uh, LCD versus OLED? And OLED is kind of generate, or maybe not, but uh, where somehow you have uh, truer colors. How many cameras have come out with this before? So essentially all of our digital cameras have had this on the SD9, which was, uh, I think, around about 2004. So there's been the SD9, the 14, the 15, and now, of course, we're into our fourth generation of camera system, which is the Quattro system. So uh, we have the SD Quattro H cameras, which have the interchangeable lenses, and the SD uh, or the DP uh, Quattro system, which are the fixed lens cameras. So the ones that you've had with interchangeable, have they been compatible with the Canon or Nikon, uh, the mount, or? Uh, no, so traditionally our interchangeable cameras have used our own proprietary mount, which is called an SA mount. Uh, and this ties in, of course, with the L Mount Alliance, where going forward, we're going to use the uh, Leica L Mount, and we're going to leverage that very short uh, flange distance, the 20 mil flange distance on that system, to produce some uh, really exciting cameras. So uh, my, my experience looking around on the internet, you know, um, and, uh, when I see, look at all the lenses that are out there, people say sometimes, for example, that uh, there might be a Sigma Art lens that's really great and it's better priced somehow, right? So potentially Leica might have some high priced ones, you might have some a little bit lower priced ones. Uh, so Sigma as a company has always seen itself as being the lens uh, for the, the, the biggest market sector, let's say. I don't want to say the mass market as such. But we've always aimed to have a competitive price point. Uh, more recently with the higher megapixel cameras, we've also aimed to have the higher resolution and, uh, and other unique features to the lenses. So we're still trying to keep a competitive price edge whilst having uh, an excellent product. So uh, Sigma is, um, is like an expert in, uh, in lenses, right? And uh, how, do, how does Sigma make the lenses? Well, uh, again, that's quite an interesting question because Sigma do actually make all our lenses in our own factory in a zoo in Japan. Uh, we do everything from bashing out the iris blades yep. through to polish and grinding lens elements and final assembly. So it's a, a really integrated system. Um, and this leads into our Cine product line. You have, this we, is high end, yeah, right? We've taken our vertically integrated production from our still camera lenses 
and we've used that to offer a Cine uh, system, or Cine series of products, uh, again at a... So for the RED camera, for ARRI? Yeah. Oh no, for, sorry, Panasonic? So they're available for uh, Canon EF, for PL positive lock, and for the Sony Air female. So, um, a lot of people buying these for product, uh, professional uh, film and TV productions? It's still early days for us, and when we launched the range, we didn't have a, sort of a budget or a target as to what we were aiming for, but they are, they are rapidly gaining a reputation in that market. And there's a whole range right here. And, uh, but these, I would guess, cost several thousand or something? The primes are typically around about the four and a half thousand pound mark in the UK. Obviously, there'll be different values and different currencies. All right. A lot of people sitting around, there's some presentations once in a while. Uh, yes, we have a number of uh, product ambassadors. This show is obviously run by our German uh, sister company. So the ambassadors will primarily be uh, people they work with. So I can't tell you too much about that. But yeah, we like to give people something to do at the show, something a bit more exciting than just looking at product behind glass. So yeah, there are presentations, there's a telephoto booth. We're keen to promote some of our accessory products as well, because as well as making the lenses and the cameras and the flash units, we also make things like the USB docks, the teleconverters, and even the USB dock for the new flash gun, which is uh, pretty unique. You have some uh, huge telephoto lenses, okay, too. Good. Like, uh, so uh, what are these? Are these for like uh, taking pictures at kilometers away? Well, the, the big green lens there is the 200-500 f2.8. It's the only 200-500 2.8 lens in the world. Um, it's not so much a, an ultra telephoto, it is only 500mm at the end of the day, but unique in being a very, very fast aperture. So absolutely fantastic for wildlife if you want to capture animals at dawn and dusk when they're most active. Um, it's a, a, a fantastic piece of kit. Do you have one of those? Uh, I have one of those in my demo kit. I don't personally own one. Okay, <laughs> cool. And, uh, uh, here you were saying there's, uh, for example, the filters around here and uh, uh, some veteran products. What is that? So these are some of our uh, older products, which are very well respected in the marketplace, but they fall outside of our current art, sport, and contemporary line. So you can see in the background there we have the uh, very well regarded macro range of lenses. Uh, Can you just of close to one yeah. second. So is, is it like this? Is that what? Is that what it was? Yeah. We can also make quite fun products uh, which are not so comfortable. And these go for what kind of cameras? So uh, it, it depends on which one you go for, but they're primarily available for Canon, Nikon, and, so, and Sigma SA. Uh, some of them will also be available in Sony A mount and Pentax mount. All right. Uh, There's a whole area for. Uh... So right here you have some sports sports lenses. Um, a lot of uh, sports photographers are happy with these. Absolutely delighted. I mean, the, the 15600, the contemporary and the sports version, uh, they are among the best-selling hyper-telephoto lenses on the market. And you go to something like an air show these days or a sports event, and when you see an aircraft come past, all the cameras go up in the air, many, many of them will have those lenses on. They are so popular. Uh, and such a, such a. Uh, uh, and uh, the prices are for professionals, right? So not, not really. Again, I can only speak to the UK market, but the contemporary version, that's a sports yeah. version, you know, that sells for about $13.99. Yeah. Uh, and the contemporary version sells for about $800. Pounds. Thirteen nine nine. Yeah. So you Seems, sounds affordable for a big lens like that. So you've got a six hundred mm lens, hypertelephoto lens, hypersonic motor for ultra fast autofocus, uh, customizable. This again is a unique feature of the signal with the USB dock. Uh, or at least do? we were the first people. So when we set the optical stabilizer up, we set it to what we felt was an optical setting in the factory. But maybe I want to have a more stable viewfinder image. And I want to run the OS a little bit slower to make tracking a subject easier. Maybe I don't care so much about the viewfinder image and I want to run it a little bit quicker. So using the USB dock and the custom functions, I can change the OS speed, I can change the autofocus speed, 
and I can even do things like change the distance at which the focus limiter works. Oh. So a little bit of customization there to make it truly your own lens. So the optical stabilizer, you can manage the speed. Oh uh, yes, a little bit. It's yes. not doing anything in the OS of the, the camera. It's no, only no. of the lens. It's only in the lens, yeah. All right. And around here, sorry. So uh, you have art. Sorry. Uh, what's the art? So around about 2013, we came to the Global Vision uh, ethos, and we split our product range down into art, sport, and contemporary. And in simple terms, you can say that the Art Series is our premium quality short focal length lenses, the Sport is our premium quality telephoto lenses, and the Contemporary is our uh, more innovative consumer type lenses, which tend to be a little bit lighter, maybe not such a faster aperture. They tend to have a thermally stable composite barrel, whereas these are primarily aluminium. So uh, people uh, enjoy, for example, the 50mm f1.4, so it's very bright. Absolutely. I mean, the, the Art Series lens, particularly the 35 and the 50, they have an enviable reputation in the marketplace for quality. Like this one right here? Yeah, that's the 35 mil. So uh, it's like a, a, a one of the best sellers or uh, within one of the, the big series, hits? Yeah, it's, I mean, so, so popular. I mean, the, the other popular one, of course, is the 18 to 35 on the APS-C system. That's found uh, a, a home in a lot of people's bags for uh, shooting video on as well as stills. A lot of people are saying that people should buy that and use the, uh, what do you call it, the adapter for Micro Four Thirds and stuff, because it's actually, you know, the, the converter. I can only speak for Sigma, and, and Sigma don't make a, a Micro Four Thirds adapter, but obviously we're aware that many, many people are using these on Panasonic's, uh, particularly for video, via various adapters that are available to third Can you announce uh, any Micro Four Thirds? Uh, we have a new Micro Four Thirds uh, lens uh, announced at this show, but it's not in the Art Series. As far as the Art Series go, the new lenses are the 40mm, 40mm f1.4. But is that Micro Four Thirds? No. No, no, this is all okay. uh, primarily Canon, Nikon and, and Sigma SA. So there's one of the new ones there? This is a unique design for us in that with our Cine lens we looked at earlier, we took our existing Art Series still lenses and we converted them into Cine type product with all the Cine gearing and that sort of thing. With the 40mm art, we did it the reverse way around. We knew we would make it as an art lens, but it was initially designed as a Cine lens, and then we launched it secondly as, a, as an art series lens. So it's a little bit bigger than some of the other art series, but the quality is absolutely phenomenal. And then the other new art series lens, again for DSLRs primarily, is the 28mm 1.4 you see there. A nice, fast 28mm lens just fills the gap that we've had between the 24 and the 35. And like all of these uh, fast aperture prime lenses, has nine rounded iris blades in them to give a great bokeh as well. Why is the 28 bigger than the 24? Shouldn't it be the opposite usually? Or uh, it depends on a whole bunch of stuff inside, right? Well, I'm sorry, I don't fully yeah. understand that. No, that's a bad, bad question. But uh, I thought that perhaps uh, if you have 1.4 or 1.4, then maybe it would require bigger optics to make it work on a 24 than a 28. Uh, yep, I, I now understand the question. Uh, in terms of the, the relative size of the lenses, it's really determined by getting the best optical performance. Sometimes that means we can make a lens a little bit more compact without sacrificing that. Sometimes we have to uh, do some clever things with the optics to make sure we get the best possible resolution uh, and the best possible performance all around, which is what the art series is really about. Is it true that uh, um, uh, Sigma doesn't? Uh, it's famous for maybe uh, not compromising on the, you know, si keeping the size maybe slightly bigger sometimes, just to get the highest quality uh, and the uh, best price. Also. Again, if you look at the contemporary range, then we're we're more interested in size and weight and flexibility, and then you see the hyper zoom lenses, uh, the 18200, the 18300 for the APS-C system. Uh, and they tend to be a little bit smaller, a little bit lighter, with a slower aperture. When you look at the Art Series lens, they are very much geared towards the best optical performance possible. Uh, and that's, that's very evident to see in the, uh, the feedback we've had online and elsewhere. Uh, very much a, uh, a lauded or a heralded uh, product range. And uh, many reviewers on the internet say that uh, you are right up there as the highest quality, and, but it's much more affordable sometimes than what other people are doing. 
that that's what they say and who am I to disagree with them yeah and uh, so this would a comp contemporary if we, if we just jump over here oh it's right it's right right over here uh, so so these these are the five you're launching right yep these, these are the five new lenses announced at photo Kina 2018 uh, all interesting and exciting in their way we're looking at two sports lenses here and we have uh, recently opened a magnesium alloy manufacturing facility at our own, at our own factory in the Zoo. And these are the first two lenses that really we can leverage the, the advantage of having our own facility for that purpose. This one in particular, the 60 to 600, uh, it has a magnesium alloy rear barrel where the lens is obviously on the most stress. And then to save weight, it has a thermally stable composite uh, main barrel which means we can have a lens that goes up to 600 mil that's roughly the same weight as our contemporary 150 to 600. So you're really getting a, a premium quality 10 times zoom, the world's only 10 times zoom that goes up to 600 mil lens uh, at a, 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 use, a, a usable and friendly weight of 1.8 kilos. And uh, so it starts very wide. Yep, yep. So it goes from a more or less a standard all the way through to a hyper telephoto, so 60 to 600. So people can use it as a standard kind of like portrait also? Yep, absolutely. So uh, some people remember we, we've always done a 50 to 500, and at the same time we did that, we did the 150 to 500. Obviously the 150 500 was replaced with the 150 600s, the sport and the contemporary. Uh, and now this realistically is the modern take on the, on the 50 to 500 10 times zoom concept. Uh, but obviously we're going up to 600, so we're starting at 60 to give that 10 times ratio. And the price is, uh, is that what you mentioned before? Yeah, so, uh, no, the 660 to 600, uh, the SRP UK price for that is 18.99. 18.99. And then uh, we have uh, this one, so also sports. This, this is absolutely an amazing piece of design. Um, almost all the barrels are magnesium alloy, so it's a, a very strong, very lightweight lens. But there's a couple of amazing features to this. It has 10 low dispersion elements. So it has uh, uh, an unparalleled amount of uh, exotic high performance glass in there. But not only that, it also has 11 iris blades, which all have a very pronounced curvature to them. So you're getting a really fantastic focal with that. So for wedding photographers, sports photographers, uh, you're not just gonna capture a sharp image, you're gonna capture a very visually pleasing image as well. Nice. And those two, they, they fit on which uh, cameras? Uh, so once again, these and the art series we're going to look at in a moment, they're available for Canon, Nikon and Sigma SI at the current time. So that means you have three versions of each? Yep. So you, you, uh, we do a mount conversion service, which is again a unique service that Sigma offer. If you were to buy it in that uh, Canon fitting, and you were to later move to a Sigma camera system, a Sigma SI camera fit, you could send the lens back to us and we would convert it from Canon to Sigma SA or from Canon to Nikon, whichever way around you want to do. You, you Provide, convert them? Yeah, provided we offered the lens in the fitting you want originally, we can we can swap between one and the other for you. But is there no, no issues with like cropping or some kind of thing that might happen if you convert? Uh, or just you're changing oh. the mount somehow? Uh, th there's no issues with cropping or compatibility, uh, but it's, it's a little bit more involved than just changing the mount. Uh, the mount on the back is actually the easy bit. On some of them, we do have to change uh, the rear barrel, but there's also the gearing, the iris coupling, the circuit boards. Uh, there's a whole bunch of parts that we have to change, but the actual optics stay the same. So you get the same optics, mostly the same barrels. Uh, possibly you have to change one barrel over, depending which way you're converting from. Because when you go from DSLR to mirrorless, there's a different focal point, right? Well, again, you have to bear in mind that these are only available for Canon EF, Nikon F and uh, Sigma SA, so we can only swap between those fittings. Uh, and all of those fittings are, of course, DSLR, not mirrorless. All right. So it's not for swapping over to a mirrorless? Uh, no. Uh, I don't know uh, if there are any plans to bring out zooms in, for example, the Sony FE. If we did do that, as we have done with the uh, prime lenses, then yes, we can swap between Canon and, and, and Sony FE. But what I was saying is, so long as we made the lens in the fitting you require, we can swap from the fitting you have to the fitting you require. Obviously, if we didn't offer the lens in that fitting, we're not able to make that conversion. Nice. But when we look at the 40mm and the 28mm, the prime lens art series here, 
These are available in Sony FE as well as Canon and Nikon and Sigma SA. So these you could buy in Canon Fit and later on swap to a uh, Sony Fit if you wanted to, Sony FE. That's the 40mm we looked at briefly earlier. That's been uh, created as an art series lens from a, an original cine lens design, uh, which makes it uh, unique in our range. And once again, we have the 28mm next to it, which you saw earlier as well, just blocking that gap between the 24 and the 35. Nice. But once again, like all of the uh, 1.4 prime art lenses, line around the iris plates in there. Nice. And you have a contemporary? Yep, the little contemporary 56mm. Um, we call this the DCDN range. Uh, it's a fantastic optical performance, very much on a parallel with our art series, but we've made it using the thermally stable composite materials to keep the weight down, so you get a very lightweight lens to carry around with you with very high optical performance. Um, and once again, looking at iris blades on this, there are actually nine iris blades in this lens which is very unusual in such a small lens for a, for a crop sensor camera. Uh, so yeah, really quite And the price is good? Pricing is yet to be announced. Right. So yeah, as far as the new products go, we only have pricing on the 60 to 600. So, uh, so uh, Sigma is uh, how old this company? Ah, now I couldn't tell you the exact date, uh, but yeah. Mitsuhiro Yamaki-san was the founder of the company and he set the business up in, I believe, the mid-60s. I did look it up once and I believe we're about five years younger than Nikon. So, so it's we've a been, long history? It's a long, it's a long history of manufacturing in our own factory in Azu in Japan, where we make everything ourselves. It's also a long history of innovation. So if you go back to uh, the early days, we were the first company to produce a teleconverter that fit between the camera body and the lens. And that kind of innovation carries on today with things like the USB dock for lenses, the USB dock for flash units, the mount conserve for conversion service. These are things which we are either first to bring to the market or that we still have unique uh, opportunity for consumers. Sometimes uh, people pay even more for the lens than for the camera. But not quite when it's Sigma, it seems to be more affordable. It depends. We would feel that uh, the lens is the more important part. Certainly, uh, you should be paying more attention to the lens perhaps than the camera in general. Obviously, if you have a very specific function or a very specific need, there may be a camera that suits your needs more than, than another one. Uh, but by and large, yeah, the optics uh, are what produces the quality. Did you announce, did you confirm if the Fulvia and the l -mount camera is coming in 2019? Uh, yeah, that was the announcement made on, I believe, Tuesday at a press conference. You didn't say exactly when, right? Uh, I saw a slide just before I came out to speak to you. Yeah. Uh, and uh, Kazuto Yamaki-san, who's the, the son of our founder, Mitsuhiro Yamaki-san, was stood in front of a PowerPoint presentation. It said, full frame, mirrorless Fovium camera 2019. So uh, I, I couldn't get a better uh, source for the information than that.